Well, good evening, good evening again. We come to you again by the help and grace of God, uh, acknowledging that without him, we're able to do absolutely nothing. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord this morning, this afternoon. Um, it is a great day today because the Lord made it, and we're glad that he made it, and we can have joy in it. Uh, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Hallelujah is our strength. It is strength to the people of God. When God gives us joy, he is strengthening us. When God knows what to do uh, to cause laughter, to cause uh, peace, to, to give us what we're standing in the need of, um, it brings joy to my soul just knowing that it's God that is doing exactly what he said he was going to do. And he provides for his people. He loves us. Uh, he protects us. It's, it's amazing. He's just amazing. And we want to give him all the praise, all the glory that is due his name. We thank him for the anointing. Uh, the anointing breaks the yoke. We thank God for giving us more grace. Hallelujah. To do his will and to understand that it's only his anointing. We are vessels of clay anointed by God. Now, how marvelous is that? And that he would anoint vessels of clay. We're made out of the dust and he anoints dust. Glory to God to bring him his glory. And that is what we are about to glorify God, to uh, receive his word, uh, to be light in the earth, uh, to be enlightened by his power, his strength, um, just to share. Uh, and we, we love the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, we just thank him. We thank him today. We want to talk to you a little bit today uh, from the unsearchable riches of Christ. This is Minister Robinson once again. Uh, thank you who are subscribing, those who are local, as well as those who are from other states. We thank you uh, for coming in and tuning in and hearing what thus saith the Lord. And, and we're going to just read today, and we're going to talk about the other pandemic. Mm -hmm. I think that's what I'm going to call this, the other pandemic, because it seems like it's something that is catching on in the kingdom of God that isn't in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Yeah, we know COVID is contagious and and um what is it the the B the next uh um uh what's it called the the um mm, leaves my mind but uh the um oh lord help me here Jesus hallelujah um It's on the tip of my tongue. I can almost feel it. But the next strand of um, disease that came from COVID or mutated uh, from COVID, uh, you know, that has been uh, among us and among uh, even the, the church. It's, it's, been, it's been there. People have caught COVID and been recovered. Some and some didn't recover. However, we want to talk to you today about another pandemic, and that is called marrying and giving in marriage in the kingdom of God. It's catching on. And guess whose fault it is? It's the leader's fault. Why? Because they're doing it. They're marrying and giving in marriage. You got so many spouses, got a spouse over here, a living spouse over there. One spouse died, one is still alive, and they still get married. They, they're marrying again. Glory to God. Well, let's look at what Jesus told his disciples in the New Testament. You know, people will say, well, Paul said it. I don't have to believe what Paul said. Well, uh, Peter said that. I don't have to go. Jesus said this. This is what Jesus said in the New Testament under which the church, the New Testament church 
was established. This is what the Lord God Almighty in the body of Jesus Christ told the disciples that he was training to go out and win the world when they asked him about marriage and divorce. Guess what Jesus said? Now he had, let me just read what he said. Okay, here we are. Mark 10th chapter, verse number five. I'm just going to read it from the New King James Version. I believe that's what this is. I want to, yep, the New King James Version. Hallelujah. I have a King James and uh, I have other versions as well. And a Strong's to go back and research and let's see what Matthew had to say about it. Uh, Matthew's commentary. But uh, let's see what Jesus himself said. Let's read. Word for word. And Jesus answered and said to them, Because of the hardness of your heart, he wrote you this precept. Now he's talking about the precepts from the Old Testament. But this is Jesus speaking to the law and what the law had to say under Moses mm -hmm, who God used to bring the law Moses recognized what well, let me just go verb, verbatim verbatim here we go but from the beginning of the creation God made them male and female now we're not talking about this other subject right now but I mean that ought to convince everyone that said they're gay this should tell you something. Male and female. You're not born a male. You're not a male. You're not born a female. You're not a female. Hallelujah. Here we are. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother, male and female, and be joined to his wife, a man joined to a wife, and the Two shall become one flesh. So then they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let not man separate. Now, this is what Jesus told the Pharisees when uh, he spoke to them about Moses and the law. Now, Jesus is still living, right? So the law was still in effect. But now he's training his disciples who are going to go forth in the covenant of the New Testament blood mm -hmm, to spread the gospel to the world, Acts 1 and 8. And this is what he says to them, because when they got in the house with Jesus, they asked Jesus again. In the house, his disciples also asked him again about the same matter, marriage and divorce. So he said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if a woman divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. What? What can that? How can we get around this? We don't need to be um geniuses we don't need to have einstein's brain to comprehend this he said if a woman he addresses the male the husband and he addresses the wife the mother the female in the marriage and says if you marry somebody else under the precept of a divorce under the situation of divorce if you divorce he didn't say you couldn't divorce if a woman divorces her husband and marries another she commits adultery not if she's divorced so we need to stop looking down on divorced people now God doesn't want us to be divorced that's not his perfect will. His will is that till death do we part. But everybody is not marrying the one that God sent. How do I know that? Mm -hmm. But here we are. 
God says, if you do it, if you marry, then you need, this is new covenant now, to either remain in that relationship or there's situations. You see, God here says there's uh, situations about the same matter. There's a situation and individuals have different situations. Some people have married physically abusive uh, spouses, and this can be females as well as males these days. Yes, uh, there's women who can fight men. And however, God said, if you're in this kind of relationship, God is a lover and he loves you. Come out of there. Get out of there. Male or female, whoever you are, if they are physically abusing you, that's not what God calls marriage. And that's not love. That is a demonic cycle. They're going to come back. They're going to apologize. And they're going to promise you they'll never do it again and almost kill you the next time. Now, sometimes they're after your faith, which can be spiritual abuse. But to be empowered with God's Holy Spirit and to live in the Spirit, we can overcome. I'm a witness. We can overcome. Glory to God. Until God fixes it. Until God fixes it. Because God can cause an unbelieving spouse, an unbelieving husband to get up and leave. They just don't want to be around holiness. They don't want to be around you. They don't want to be around like praying and, and speaking in tongues and, and tithing. Oh, no, don't, don't tithe. After so many years, God will say, okay, you've been faithful. And God will cause them to get up and depart. Mm -hmm. Does that free you to marry again? No. Even if they go off and they get married, God said, mm -mm. but if the unbelieving departs, let me read you the word of God. This is in 1 Corinthians 7 and 15. God said, but if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases. See, God knew there were going to be different cases. This, this, I think this phone is ringing. I'll have to call her back. Hallelujah. God knew that there would be uh, such cases. But God when the unbelieving departs, and guess what? That's God too. When they leave, God said, God has called us to peace. So you can't say that's not God. That causes a person that is an unbeliever that has harassed you day in and day out. And you've had tests from the bedroom to the bathroom with that person that you chose and said yes to. Or that you asked to marry. And they said yes. So this goes for male and female. But God has called us to peace. Because you don't have no peace living with an unbeliever up in your face. No, you're not going to have no peace. You're trying to walk with God. You're following God all you know how. And they constantly, I doubt this. I don't care. This don't know. You can't show me where we got to pay tithes in the New Testament. That is stingy. And you know they are because they don't want to give you no money. So you know they're not going give, to give it to God whom they cannot even see. Hello. So let's, let's look back here. I have some things I want to share with you because this is the other pandemic. This is the other thing that's, that's contagious and is happening in the body of Christ. Misleading the people of God. You know, in the Old Testament, Ezra, when he came to restore. Now, he came to the kingdom of God for such a time as this. And uh, under uh, Cyrus, King Cyrus, who was supposed to be a good hearted man. Um, a charitable uh, 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 king. 
And he gave permission to Cyrus, uh, to, I'm sorry, to Ezra, to go and to restore uh, Jerusalem. So in that province now, God had called the people to peace. But when Ezra got there, after they built the temple and reconstructed the temple and made their sacrifices, the first issue that Ezra had with the people, they came and reported it to, to Ezra. Some of the leaders came, the scripture says. Said so they came and they told Ezra, they have taken wives from uh, the Philistines, uh, from all Assyrians, they done intermarried. Now that's another such case. They were not divorcing those wives. They were not marrying within the body. That's what happened. So they were marrying unsaved, unsanctified uh, people, and they're taking them for wives and had children by them. And guess what Ezra said? Put those women right back. Put those men back. Mm -hmm. I, you know, it doesn't, it only talks about the men who took the wives. And I wasn't there, but I'm going to speculate. Some of those uh, Israeli and Jewish women who knew God had some of them men that was not saved. And I know they were sorry. After they got that man in there speaking all that foul language over their children. And the Bible goes on to talk about the uh, the children were speaking mixed language. So they were like had broken Hebrew. You know, like in the South, we have uh, uh, Cajuns and, and they speak Creole and broken French. Well, that comes from a mixture. Mm -hmm. And so God wasn't pleased. And God's and Ezra... Ezra started saying, look, separate yourselves. This happened, the Bible says, mostly among the leaders. You need to read Ezra. You need to read what happened in the book of Ezra. I think it's around the 10th chapter. Mm -hmm. And uh, he would, it would go on to explain that this was the leadership that was intermarrying. Now, they were intermarrying with unsaved people. But now listen up. If you marry in somebody in the body of Christ and they say they then they saved and you save, well, what's the difference if you're doing something that causes adultery uh, to come out of it? How can you not uh, use the precept that Ezra was given in the Old Testament because it was sin? And Jesus explained that real detailed to his disciples in the New Testament. He said, you go get one of those uh, women. Now, this was in the, not in the case of an unsaved person, but it could have been. It could have been. But whoever divorced after you marry. Now, this is what I want to say to you about this spirit of separation and departure. God is saying to us, if you are planning on leaving, if you got a spirit of departure, then you need to leave your mama and your daddy before you get married. Not after you get married. No, this comes before. The leaving comes before, not after. Mm -hmm. Unless God has sanctioned you to be called to peace. God can do it any kind of way he wants. He can make them get up and leave. Yes, he can. Or he could take them out by way of death. Yes, he can. He can do it a number of ways. He can let you see that they're in adultery. And you, with your smart self, you know, I can forgive them. Yeah, you can forgive them. But it'll never be pleasing in the sight of God because you're taking an adulterer back in your bosom. God said they're adulterers. That's what he said. Now, that's up to y'all. Amen. But up to God, he said they're adulterers. Can God forgive them? Yes, he can. Can that marriage work? 
child, ask God. You know, you need to ask the Lord. Because once that marriage bond is broken, uh, it is difficult to trust again. And if you can't have a relationship where you can trust one another, what's that all about? What's that about, Alfie? Hallelujah. All right. We need to leave our mamas and our daddies before. Because you are leaving that home to establish a new home. And the Lord said to the disciples in the New Testament that they become one flesh. Why? They are becoming united to produce flesh. Reproduction is what marriage is basically about. But we don't get that. Yes, we love. But it's basically about giving God some more creatures to worship him. Raising up some sanctified children. And if you have an unbelieving spouse, I guarantee you it's going to be difficult to raise those children. Because their children, they're going to want to do what's easy. And, and, and unbelieving people like easy. They like comfort. they like, oh no, that's too much. I can't be putting my money over there when I could be buying this. Mm-mm. Not understanding that that is the, one of the most blessed places to put your money. Glory to God. <laughs> but let's acknowledge this now. It's a pandemic. And it's amongst leadership. People that are way up the line. People that the world is watching. And let me tell you, the world is, they're mocking us. They're mocking the people of God. I saw one instance where a bishop, well known internationally, now is, is currently pastoring. He just remarried. And right after the video showed their marriage, then they put a video up right behind it. It was like it was connected to it of the wife ministering in song. Everybody got the same last name. Now the new missus has the, the name. The old missus still got the name. And she prayed and worshiping God. But the Bible said you make her an adulterer. And you become an adulterer. It's a pandemic that we haven't even uh, recognized in the body of Christ. It's a, it's a marriage, uh, an intermarriage, uh, not intermarriage, but what I want to call this, Lord. Lord, give me what to call it. It's sin. Amongst the leadership. And marriage is so precious in the sight of the Lord. His bride is compared to uh, the body of Christ. And so we got leadership now that's making mockery. But God does not sleep. And my heart goes out to people. Can you imagine what that was like for Ezra to go in there and say, okay, you got to put this woman away. I know you fell in love with her. I know these children are beautiful. I know that you all have had and shared some of the deepest intimate times together. But you got to cut it off. That's heartbreaking. I love seeing people love one another. I love to see marriages that are working and, and they're working together for the kingdom of God, for the upbuilding of God's kingdom. I love to see love. Hallelujah. And it hurts. But you know what? God is large and in charge. And guess what? Lil me is not getting in his way when he comes to his word. Oh, no, I'm lining up with the word of God. And if that's your choice, maybe you did it ignorantly. Maybe, I, but let me tell you what. God is the God that will explain himself. Yes, he will before and after. He will show, show you. Because we, we not have no excuse when we get before God. But just like it happened in the Old Testament under Ezra. Now, these, those people, like I said, they were marrying unsaved people. But here it is in the New Testament. God said that was a precept. But here it is in the New Testament. And God addressed that thing under Moses. He said for the heart. Because the men's heart was so hard. In other words. They must have been treating them women terrible. 
And Moses said, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. You know, they people, uh, and, and although they were considered property, Moses said, let them alone, let them go. Because you, be, when you have a hard heart, you have no compassion. You know, they, they probably was working those women to death and having babies and then they go up and leave. Well, God bless them. Hallelujah. The Lord said to his disciples, divorce is not an option if you're going to plan on remarrying. Now, he didn't say don't divorce. There's some situations where and God doesn't like divorce. But there's such cases where it happens. But we need to stop looking down on people in the body of Christ that are divorced. They're trying to do the best they can. It's not easy. But God can make it easy if you pray that prayer. Pray that prayer. If you divorced and you see this, say, God, help me. Help me to make it easy. But don't you be a fool and marry somebody else while that spouse is living, male or female. Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay, let's see what else God has to say about it. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 7 and 15. I, I went over this once before, but I want to explain this to you. It says, if the unbelieving departs, let him depart. And the Bible goes on to say, for God has called us to peace. God did it. God had mercy on you. And he let the unbelieving leave you alone. Don't you be going back and forth. Don't you go back to them. When they leave, you better let them stay gone. You better close, close, close shop, darling. Close shop. You don't need to have all that. God can take it and God can fix you and help you. And you know where I'm coming from. You can be single again and have the Lord Jesus Christ take care of your mind. You don't have to creep over there for a one night stand. No, you don't. You're going to mess yourself up spiritually. Listen, stop depending on them. You were used to them, you know, helping out sometime. Like I said, they're unbelieving. So, you know, they wasn't doing all of what they should have been doing. But God will make a way for you. God has promises to those that are trying to, to those who are walking with him. He makes promises and God does not lie. He can't do it. He will take care of you. It may not be what you want and when you want it, but there comes a time even with that, that God just said, here, here's a blessing. Here, take this, take that. Not that we deserve it. No, it's simply grace. It's simply his grace. It's who he is. God is great grace. And he will take care of you. I'm a witness. Glory to God. You can make it. Yes, you can. And I want to let you know this. I, I may be old. I got gray hair. But I'm not dead. I want you to know where I'm coming from. But guess what? God is so good to me. That's where my mind is. Yes, he is. Now, when and if God fixes things, it's going to have to be God. Glory to God. It was going to have to be God. Well, I just pray that you will not catch the kingdom COVID. Maybe that's what I'll call this. Kingdom COVID. The issue of marrying and divorcing and remarrying. God is not happy. And he's expressing it these days. I feel sorry, I feel so sorry for people because you know what? God is not going to back up off of his word. Mm -mm. 
I, I hate to see people that have loved one another, but it wasn't of God. It wasn't the Lord. And you done went and remarried. Oh, Lord, how you going to fix that? Not my business. I'm just here to bring the word. Well, we're right at 30 minutes. And so we know our span, sometimes of uh, attention, can be short. So we're going to leave it, and we want you to go for yourself. Look at the word of God. It's simple. Either you become adulterous, or you're just going to remain divorced and leave them people alone. And stop that marrying and remarrying. Hello? We're trying to keep the word of God. Yes, we are. And not that, you know, we don't have other issues. God is perfecting us. He's working on all of us. He's not working on you. You're in trouble. I thank God. He's send the word, Lord. Cut this off. Take that out. Yes, Lord. Put this in. Weave it in me, God. Hallelujah. So God bless you. And I pray that something was said to either keep you from doing the wrong thing. Or if you have done the wrong thing, take it to the Lord. But look at the word of God and know you are in a fix. May God love you, bless you, keep you. Pray my strength, the unsearchable riches of Christ loves you. In Jesus' name, amen.